Hey YouTube, not so slim Jim. So today I'm working on my my Strybog A1. Uh, I don't have my tri tripod with me, so forgive. It's a little shaky. So uh, you've seen my A3 um, that I've already done the lingo lower on and the uh, the um, Scorpion Mag and all that stuff. This is my A1, which I'm using as a backpack bag. Problem is though, is the barrel's a little bit too long. It just barely doesn't fit. I know I could put a shorter muzzle brake on it, which I do have one, but it only makes it about uh, three-fourths of an inch shorter. Now, right now, I'm running a 3D printed uh, handguard extension for a little more purchase. That's not a big deal. So what I want to do is I want to cut this down to basically is a K length. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be cutting and threading the barrel to remove about two inches of barrel to bring this back so I can still run the... Uh, the ASR mount for my suppressor that I bring with it. Another issue, which anyone who owns a Strybog knows, that the feeding ramp on it, well, they kind of suck. If you want to run ball or ball rounds, you know, full metal jackets, uh, they usually have zero issue. But if you try running um, larger mouth hollow points or like civil defense rounds or anything like that nature, they don't work the greatest. They tend they get hung up pretty badly. Um, they like to go into, hold on, I'm going to pause this and I'll show you where. Now, as you can tell, the feed limp on it has that feed lip that kind of goes to an abrupt stop and then goes to the chamber. Because of that, the rounds like to come up, hit the top of the chamber, and uh, they kind of get stuck and you get failure to feed. Now, I already fixed that on my A3, but because I'm going to be removing the barrel to cut it down, I'm going to be fixing that on my A1 as well. So today we're going to be showing how to shorten the barrel, kind of, because I'm not actually going to be showing the work to try to abide by uh, YouTube's terms of services. I'm just going to be showing the what I can, hopefully, and not being removed for this video. Um, also, this video is not going to be able to be monetized, obviously, because I'm working on a firearm. So do me a favor, if you watch this video and it helps you, find another one of my videos and watch it to try to help me out. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and start stripping off the excess stuff, and we will try to do this as best as we can. All right, first step is going to have to move the lower, which, of course, I can't show that because YouTube policies... So I'm pretty sure you know how to remove the two pins just like you would with an AR. They pop out, lower comes down, bolt has to be forward. So next what we're going to do is we're going to figure out how far we're going to push the barrel back if that's what you want to do. So what I did is I me measured the length of the barrel, which I got 0.566 inches. So I put some orange marker onto the barrel and I'm going to scratch across so I know where I need the end of the thread to be and the beginning where I'm going to actually reduce the length of the barrel. So let me go ahead and do that off camera so that way I don't screw it up. All right, now that I have a start and stop point, which I will make more visible later, but for now at least I have them on, you're going to have to remove the barrel. Now to do that, you're going to have to buy this Strybog barrel remover tool. This is a requirement and you have to buy this. I'll leave a link in the description to where you can buy one. Now in this there are two barrel nuts, one on top of the other so it's a double lockup. And what I like to do if I found out the first one is to actually remove the barrel before you start removing the bolt and everything else to loosen those two bolts. And the reason you want to do that is because you need, they're actually pretty snug on there. And you want to put the upper into a vise or some way of holding it to keep it from moving. And if you don't have the bolt in there, because this is an aluminum extruded upper, it tends to try to pinch it. I don't want it to pinch, so having the bolt in there gives you a place where you can grab onto it with a vise and a set of soft jaws that isn't going to try to crush the heck out of this piece of aluminum. So let me go ahead and take those two nuts off and show you what it looks like.
Okay, these are the two barrel nuts. They are kind of reminiscent of uh, castle nuts. It'll be one right on top of the other. And uh, th like I said, they're pretty snug on there. But once they break free, they come off real easy. So just undo one, screw it out, let it out, undo the second one. Then from that point, the barrel is no longer directly attached. But you do have these two pins in the bottom that hold everything in place. So at this point, now we're going to go ahead and remove the bolt carrier group, the springs, the back plate, and all that. So the back plate will actually, I can't show you, but if you look in your instruction manual on how to push down and slide out. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Once again, if you look at your instruction manual, you'll see how to remove the bolt and the back plate. Okay, so after you have pressed down and slid out the rear plate, the bolt spring is a recoil assembly and everything will slide out your charging handle will get pulled back to these grooves and pulled out i have the double one on this one then you can use a screwdriver or something and slide out your charging assembly which this one is the factory plastique one eventually i'll get a metal now from here of course <laughs> you have your two metal lugs to remove these you move the bolt forward and these would normally come out, but you have to remove the bolt ah, all the way. Now there's one more thing in the way of doing that, and that's the ejector. These have Loctite on them. So what you're gonna wanna do is get yourself Terry the torch. Now you can use a lighter and just hold it at an angle to that to heat up the Loctite to loosen it, but this works much faster. I only gotta put this on there for about three to five seconds it'll loosen it up then you remove it now i gotta warn you when you put the torques in there or the, the i think this one's an allen when you put that in there make sure it is fully seated okay use a good bit make sure it's fully seated when it's hot then remove it because these little two little screws right here will strip ridiculously fast Okay, so be very careful when removing it. It feels like it's starting to give, let off, put some more heat to it. Okay, I've heard people say, oh, just don't use the cheap torques. It doesn't matter how, or how bit, it doesn't matter how cheap your bit is because these screws are going to be what strips, not the screw, not the bit head. So heat that guy up first, loosen up that Loctite, then go ahead and remove it. And on the inside, it'll be what looks like a Soviet can opener and it'll pop right out. Okay, once you get those two screws up, which honestly are the biggest pain in the butt of this whole part, um, you have this spring here that goes into place right along here, along the barrel. So remember, if you need to, take a picture, rewatch this video. So when this barrel slides rearwards, you can see exactly how it's located in a little slot. My, as you can see how it goes, let me see if I can get some better light for you. Flashlight. Yeah, you can see it goes right along the side of the barrel there on the ejection port side. So you know where that goes. And my receiver is hot, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull this barrel out the rest of the way without burning my fingies. All right, the barrel is now free. You have the little front piece with the spring here. I'll show you exactly how that spring goes in, which you can keep together. So I'll put that out of the way. You have these two pieces that come out freely. Okay, which you don't have to remove them because the barrel just slides through them and it works as a strengthening point. So I'm just going to leave my upper as is. And we're going to look at what the feed ramp looks like. Now it's dark and I'm at my bench so I can see better than you can. So a little light, it's an LED, so sorry for the flash. But you can see, take a good picture of what it looks like beforehand. Because I'm going to go ahead and do some cut work to it. But you want to see what this looks like before we do the digging in on the feed ramp. So you have some reference it's what it looks like before and after. All right, so I have cut the barrel down, which obviously I can't show on YouTube. Stupid. 
So I cut it down to the length I want. I left one half inch for threads and I cut it down to one half inch in diameter because obviously uses one half by 28 for the nine mil. I'm not super concerned about the crown right now because I will fix that when I'm done with the threads. So I'm going to put this in a vise going upwards. I have my one half by 28 die. I have a one half by 28 thread starter. Now this is for a 22, not a nine millimeter. So I'm going to evenly wrap tape around it until it's centered. The big thing is just making sure it's uh, concentric. You don't want it uh, tied up in any direction uh, like that. Because if you do, then obviously if you run a suppressor, uh, you're going to get baffle strikes. So I'm going to get that in here lined up, get some uh, tap magic on here and start running these threads, which I can't show you, but watch any video on how to start a thread and you pretty much figure it out. All right, <clears throat> went ahead and got the barrel cut down to the length I wanted and threaded. Now, because I used a hand tap with a thread starter, there is no gutter on it, which isn't a big deal because I'm going to be using a crush washer anyways with the shortest ASR mount they make, which is already in 9mm, so it's fine. Um, so this is going to work. Uh, I already went ahead and test fit it in the barrel to make or the upper to make sure it's the proper length. But now we need to work on the feed ramps. Like I said earlier, I go ahead and get a good look at it now. Because I can't show you me doing the work, but I can show you what it looks like afterwards, so you know what to do. So, go ahead and prep for that. Alright, now first off, this isn't my best feed ramp job, but I'm going to go through what I did. So, obviously the lower ramp here, there was this step up, yeah, slightly magnetic, that came up, and then there was the little pig belly here like you have on a 1911. So... I got a little heavy with the uh, the carbide here, as you can tell, but this is my backup gun. This isn't a show gun. This is just a cheap, fun 9 miller. So where this came up and across, I dug it down so it's a flush angle. Then for the inside ramp, I didn't go back into the chamber. I left the back where it was already at and just dug this down. Now, you can try to get where this is completely flush, but there's such a divot in there. It's kind of hard right here. I got close, but the big thing is where you get a smooth or smooth enough transition where that round comes up. It will just go boop right into the chamber. And I went through and just polished it up a little bit. There's a couple little scratches here and there, but like I said, this is just a backpack gun. I'd rather have it work good than spend an extra half an hour trying to make this look perfect but from the angle you can see I may have came back just slightly just trying to blend this down I polished the upper portion a bit and I just used the little fiber guys these little dudes on the Dremel they work great you don't have to worry about getting polish and junk in there make sure this is smooth I try to do from here to about here so in case the round comes in at a funky angle when the bolt grabs it it will try to force it into the center of the chamber the big thing though is you really don't want to push this secondary ramp back I mean I got a little bit you can tell maybe half a millimeter because this this is up really close but if you push this too far backwards then if you're running a hot round or a plus P round or something and you fire it can allow too much uh, unsupported casing, and it can blow out the bottom, and you're just having a bad day. So let's go ahead and get this guy reassembled. All right, as you can tell, she's all back together. The barrel is considerably shorter. I got the shorter ASR on there. Uh, the feed ramp work is done, so now she should be able to feed pretty much any 9mm round. Uh, it should now fit into the backpack. I can't lean back far enough. Anyways, because I'm holding this by hand. But, shaved, uh, so this was the extension. This is about two inches. And then I have about another, about the same amount of stick out that's on here now. So I shaved about two inches off. So this is about the size, maybe slightly longer than the K. But I like having enough purchase on here, because I got the fat monkey mechanics hands. Because you can tell just enough room for my 
fat old hand up here to hold on to it so it is short enough but not too short um, I'm gonna see if I can't reuse my rail grips probably not now but you know whatever life is a tragedy and uh, anyways if you guys have questions comments or concerns leave them down in the comment section and until next time